Okay, so um, let's talk about kinetic energy a little bit. Kinetic energy has an equation associated with it, and the equation is this one-half mv squared. One-half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity of the, the particle. Oftentimes, we'll represent the energy of uh, other, or the velocity of a particle with this vector, we call it. And what it does is the vector shows uh, direction and it shows speed. So here are two particles moving in the same direction. Which one's going faster, Fre um, Fred? Did you forget my name? I do. I want to call you Frank all the time. That's ridiculous. You should remember my name always. I should. I should. But I won't. I'm, I'm not very good at that. So will you forgive me? I'll think about it. Oh, that's not very healthy. You should always forgive. The bigger one is the higher energy. Very good. The bigger one is higher energy. It's moving faster. Okay. Now, these vectors don't take into account the size of the particle. But the size of the particle is important when you're thinking about how much energy it has. Let's think about this. Tell me what I'm drawing, Frank. Fred. <laughs> That's not funny. I know. I'm sorry. Tell me what I'm drawing. It uh, looks like a car. It's not a car? Well, it's a little bit bigger than a car. Oh, it's a bus. Yeah, it's a bus. Very good. So, I have a bus. The bus is traveling at 10 miles per hour. Okay? Um, this is... What is that? Fred? What, the, the, the dot? Yeah, what is that little thing? Just a dot? No, look closer. Oh, uh, I can't tell. It's a mosquito. Okay, mosquito. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so the mosquito is traveling at 25 miles per hour. Can they go that fast? I don't know, but let's say that that mosquito is traveling at 25 miles per hour. Who has more energy, the bus or the mosquito? Uh, I, I'm sure it's the bus. It has to be the bus. The mosquito's traveling faster, but this is some sort of trick or just trying to show me that it doesn't matter your speed, your amount of mass also contributes to your energy. That's right. Very good. If this was another bus, the same mass traveling at 25 miles per hour, then the bus with the 25 miles per hour will be travel, have more energy, right? But just because something is traveling faster, it doesn't mean it has more energy. Mass is also associated with energy, okay? Very good. So, um, this energy can be transferred from one element, molecule, system to another by contact, by collisions right? And these molecules will com contact each other. See, we have all of these vectors representing molecules or elements or um, compounds, system of some sort. And here's another system. And what do we know about this system's energy, the one on the left compared to the one on the right? The one with the bigger arrows, the, the left has more energy. That's right, has more energy. When they come in contact and the actual particles can hit each other, then the faster moving ones, the ones with more energy, will hit the slower moving ones and speed them up. And the result will be what we call um, an equilibrium. Equilibrium. Both of them will have the same energy if they're allowed to interact. Okay. Now, we recognize here that the energy wasn't created or destroyed, right? And energy cannot be created or destroyed. You can transfer energy from one system to another, but um, energy is never created or destroyed. And destroyed, and this is what we call the first law of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the study of, of energy and its change. Uh, so um, just like mass cannot be created or destroyed, we talked about the, the conservation of mass, energy can also not be created or destroyed. Um, so, if we think about this energy in terms of heat, heat, or temperature, the temperature is the average kinetic energy of particles, all right? 
Now we kind of might, might not have ever had that perspective, but when you put your hand on something cold, like maybe I put it on the table here and I feel the table is a little chilly, what that's telling me is that the motion of those molecules in that table are slower than those that are in my hand. And I can warm them up by rubbing it and eventually both of us will feel the same temperature. The table in my hand will feel the same temperature. So we'll reach what we call thermal equilibrium. So temperature is the average kinetic energy of whatever the molecules are, are in that system, okay? Heat is the transfer of this energy. Like we showed previously, we can transfer that heat when groups of molecules come in contact with each other. Now the units of energy that we'll deal with in chemistry class are joules, and we often speak of them in terms of kilojoules, thousands of joules, all right? Another energy unit called the calorie. Have you heard of calories? Yep, I'm always counting my calories. That's right. Got to make sure you're aware of how much energy you're taking into your body and uh, how you're using it appropriately, right? You don't need to, to take extra. It results in uh, um, poorer health, right? So um, the nutritional calorie is actually a, a kilo lower a kilo calorie or thousands of these lowercase calories. So when you look on the back of a candy bar or a bag of chips and look for the calories per serving, that information is in thousands of calories or a nutritional calorie, a capital C. And the definition of a calorie is how much energy it takes to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius. So let's think about that, okay? If I have one gram of water, what volume is one gram of water? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. Well, do you remember the density of water? Yeah, the density of water is one. And what were the units for that? Uh, density. Was that mass over volume? That's right. So, what kind of units? Uh, grams over milliliters? Good. Grams over milliliters. One gram per milliliter. So, one milliliter is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, right? One centimeter over here is one centimeter and the side is one centimeter, right? That's a milliliter of water or a gram of water. Therefore, the amount of energy needed to raise this one gram of water, just one degree Celsius. So from maybe one to two or from 25 to 26, just need to raise it one degree Celsius. That is what the definition of a calorie is, okay? And that in terms of joules is 4.184 joules, all right? Okay, now, as we said before, the energy that is transferred from one system to another isn't created or destroyed, it is just moving. Now, sometimes you'll have a chemical reaction, there's no heat in there at all, you, you, you touch the reaction, nothing happens, and then you start the reaction, and then the reaction produces a lot of heat. And people, in the past, definitely, would say, oh, I am creating energy, I am creating energy. They couldn't visualize or understand that as the bonds rearranged themselves and settled, that motion was released to the surroundings. And that surroundings uh, absorbed that energy, absorbed that motion, and got hotter and began to move uh, more quickly, increased its kinetic energy, increased its temperature. Okay? Uh, so E, we call it a state function because all it's doing is measuring the energy um, from the products or the, the final state compared to the initial state or the reactants state. And we call delta E, or really delta anything for that matter, we're going to be talking about delta T for change in temperature, delta H for change in the heat energy component, but delta E is always the, or delta anything is always products or fin final, whatever it is, minus initial or the reactants when we're talking about a reaction, okay? Um, so, um, we always are measuring the change in energy because we can't measure the, we can't ourselves measure how much energy is in the, the bonds of a, of a compound without comparing it to some other reaction 
or the products of a chemical reaction, right? So temperature is again, the average kinetic energy. Now look at this little graph right here. This is a favorite for people asking questions in uh, you know, some standardized tests, like uh, the ACS exam, for example. So um, this represents here the number of particles, fraction of them, so this would be like 60% of the particles, 40%, 20%, and this is their uh, energy in just some kinetic energy arbitrary units. System one has a lot of particles at this energy. System two has most of its particles at this energy. And so we would say system two, because it has higher kinetic energy, must have a higher temperature, all right? Um, more particles over here have higher temperatures. Some particles have lower temperatures than those of the um, purple one here. But on average, we have a higher kinetic energy. So on average, two is going to have a higher temperature. All right. So heat is, again, the transfer of that this energy. And our unit or our uh, variable that we use for heat uh, is, is Q, okay, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, heat always transfers from high temperature regions to lower temperature regions, all right, and that makes sense in terms of the motion that we are talking about as well, right? Um, let's think about putting a spoon. Uh, if you put a spoon that's at 25 degrees Celsius into a pot of boiling water, what happens to the spoon? It gets hot. Okay, it gets hot. But what's happening at the molecular level? The atoms in the spoon are moving faster. That's right. Why do they begin to move faster? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Can you think about the water molecules that are in the boiling water, what they're doing? Well, they're already hot, so they're moving fast. So are you, are you saying like they begin to collide with the spoon and make those atoms in the spoon move faster? That's right. That's right. So that's what's occurring when we transfer that energy. Um, what the specific atoms that hit the, or sorry, the specific water molecules that hit the spoon, what happens to them? Do they slow down? They do slow down, don't they? Because they're losing their energy. So the temperature of the water will decrease. The temperature of the spoon will increase. Um, the amount of energy that the water loses will have to be equal to the amount of energy that the spoon gains. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think so. I wasn't really listening very well, but... Okay, so let me say it again. The average or the energy that the water lost in terms of temperature had to be equal to the energy that the spoon gained because that's where the water lost its energy to the spoon. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, good. Um, and because of this, heat transfer is a, a state function. You can measure the temperature of before and after for both of those and know about the heat, that the heat transfer that occurred just by measuring the temperature. Now, we want to define, well, because this is a good place to stop. We'll start next time here.